Welcome to Blueprint OT. Here you have your main interface where you can see tables and stuff like this. You hit server first and it will immediately ask you for the passcode. So you want to enter the password for the super user Postgres. So in my case, again, that's a simple password. I will also save this password to not have the need to re-enter it here frequently. I hit go and here we are. We already set up the first database is already in place. We can see all the stats of our server, which is going to be interesting as soon as you have a significant database in place where you maybe want to lock sensor data or stuff like this. So you have high frequencies, then you may want to see what's your actual load on your server to decide which server you want to book with your hosting provider or whatsoever. On the left hand side, we can navigate to our database, open this little folder here and we can see the databases, we have one, that's the, what's in the brackets here, and this one database is actually the Postgres database. So it can look pretty confusing pretty quickly, but just keep in mind the different layers here. That's the databases you have, and there's one database at the moment, and it's called Postgres. I don't want to work with the default database. I want to show you quickly how to create your own one. To do so, you hover across databases, do the right click, create, database and there you go you can call it whatever you want you can define your owner in case you have already a certain user structure in place which we haven't so we are fine with all of this i will skip through all those tabs here because only thing i want to show you is the sql the sql tab here where you can see the actual sql command that was generated for you so whatever you enter here in this nice graphical user interface will be translated into an SQL command. So the database knows what to do. We are done here, pretty simple, hit save. And there we go, the database was created already. So now we can see here databases in brackets two because we have two databases, Postgres and Blueprint IoT. And now it's time to create a table. To create a table, you have to navigate within your database onto schemas open this one there you have public opened by default and then you can go down and to tables here we go so it's quite a bit of a hidden navigation uh, especially because tables are the main thing you want to work with as you can see once we try to open tables it's empty nothing happens because we first have to create one for this right click again create create table there we go Again, a pop-up menu, nice and easy for beginners. We can name the table. I will call it videos. I will just head to columns, add a column here, which I will call name of the actual video. And I will also add one, which wanna be my video ID. And that's all for the moment. You have to select a data type. And since the name will be some sort of text, I will select text. And the video ID I want to be done automatically. So I select serial. Actually, I want to have the video ID in the first place. So I will rearrange this quickly. The video ID is also supposed to be my primary key. And that's all for the moment. Again, you can quickly check this with your SQL tab here at the end. It will create a table and so on and so forth. I think that's a great way also to learn SQL by just always checking what's the actual command look like. We hit save and there we go. Now we can see with tables and the brackets one because we have one table and there it is. It's called the videos. We can also look here into the different columns and stuff like this. But what we actually want to do here is we want to quickly have a right click and then we want to view slash edit data and view all rows. And now we can finally visually access our database. We can see that's our table here within our database Blueprint IoT, which we created earlier. And here we can see the two columns. So to wrap up this video, we will quickly input some data. For this, we can hit here add row, where we can now see our video ID and our name of the video is to be selected. We can already see that it's default for the video ID, so we won't touch this one. But for the name, we can double click here. So we will call this Postgres and PG admin will be the title of this video. So we hit OK. And now very important, we have to save data changes. Don't hit run here. If you hit execute here, you will run this command, which will basically then 
ignore or let's say drop all the data we entered here. So we'll just hit save data. So that's done. And we can see automatically we received an ID because we selected serial before. So that's all done. We have created our first entry. If you want to double check quickly, exiting the whole database until we're back for our data dashboard. You can also see in the stats how many data entries have been created and deleted. You can see I created one before and deleted it again. And now if we reopen our table here, again, right click on the actual table name, view edit data, all rows. By the way, be careful with all rows. If you have a long list of data from sensor data whatsoever, it can take forever to load it. So make sure to go normally for the first 100 rows except you're looking for some old data that's way down in the table maybe. Here we go again and there it is our data entry was stored. We have our ID, this was two before as well. So this was all kept in the way we entered it. The name is here, so that all worked. With this, I want to close this video for today. I hope you liked it. And in case you want to learn anything specific about Postgres or PG Admin, please let me know down in the comments. Make sure to be subscribed for our next videos about Postgres and PG Admin, where we're going to learn a bit more how to use PG Admin, how to delete stuff, how to work with all the different menus we have, where we're also going to install Postgres on a Raspberry Pi and Windows. In the meantime, thanks for watching and see you next time.